Master Maricard, hindi ko alam, nagkakaroon na pala siya ng apelido. Hindi ang inform. By the way, um, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to our doctrine class. And before we start, I'd like to request everybody to please stand up. Open our Bibles in uh, the book of Acts. We will be studying Acts chapter 2, verses 14 to 21. Sorry, up to 24. I will read the verses, just read uh, with your eyes. I will start Acts chapter 2, verses 14 to 24. 14 it says, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lift up his voice, and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my voice, to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass, in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Let us pray, O Father in heaven, O Lord, we thank you for this time that you have given us to again study your word. Our prayer, O Lord, is that the Holy Spirit guide us, teach us your word, so that we'll be able to learn something, O Lord. We uh, thank you. We ask for your guidance in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are in our series in the books in the book of Acts. Actually, this is already our fifth lesson, and our the title of our uh, lesson for today is the first Christian sermon. The first Christian sermon. This is already uh, lesson number five. We've read several um, uh, verses of, of the Bible, and we can see. <clears throat> that the sermon that uh, Peter delivered was the first sermon ever preached uh, uh, by the church. <clears throat> in our lesson, you can see that it says, Bear in mind that God has determined to use preaching as His primary means to build up the church. We see much in the way of secular techniques invading churches today. And slowly, the declarative preaching of the word is being lost. Yet, the first recorded act after the Holy Spirit's arrival to the earth was the preaching of the word of God, delivered by Apostle Peter. Preaching was the tool used by the disciples back then. And it is still the tool that we use today to preach the word of God. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ, according to Acts chapter 5, verse 42. Also in Acts chapter 8, verse 4, it says, And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. God used great men of the past, in the past, sorry, like Hus. Tyndale, Hudson, Taylor, Moody, and Spurgeon. Actually, in large measure. You can see that these great men of God you know, used the preaching of the Word of God to reach a lot of people. And also, Paul described this, uh, his mission in this way. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 to 25, it says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greek seeks after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. We can see that, uh, as I mentioned, a lot of great preachers use the word of God to preach the gospel. It is also our mandate today to use the gospel, to preach the gospel. As they, have de as they have done before. In the Bible, we can see two words about preaching. It used the word keruch, keruch, K-E-R-U-C-H, means a bold declaration. And didache, didache means the didactic teaching of doctrine. It is intended to convey instruction and information. So that, that's two words, keruch, a bold declaration and deduction, the didactic teaching of the doctrine. Actually, when you read the verse, when you study the verses that we've read earlier, we can see that uh, we can learn three points, actually. Three points from the sermon that was given by Peter. Actually, the first, uh, the Peter, uh, sorry, the sermon that Peter um, uh, 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 preached, <coughs> It actually presents a model that should characterize all Christian preachings. We can, we can actually learn um, the principles and characteristics of a, pre of a preaching from the way uh, Peter delivered her, her, uh, his first sermon. Um, first, first lesson. Peter's defense of the early church. Peter began to defend the early church in his very first sermon. We can see that in verse 13 and 14. It says here, 14 and 15, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lift up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. We can learn that Peter was accompanied by other apostles. He was accompanied by other apostles. God does not intend for his children to minister in isolation from each other. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 10, it says, Two are better than one, because they have a good, they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fail, the one will lift up his fellow. This is the reason why when we go Bible studies, it's better if you go by two. You need to have a partner so that the other can lift you up if in case you, you fall. There is strength in unity according to the Bible. And we need to be encouraging others also in their preaching and witnessing efforts. Uh, actually, it's not easy to preach the gospel. It's not easy to teach. It's not easy to go out and preach the gospel. It's not easy. That's why we also need to encourage others who are doing it. It is very important that we encourage others. Um, you can see that Peter is a novice in preaching. He's a neophyte. He doesn't have any experience. That is why he needed to be with the other apostles when he delivered this first sermon. The Lord is teaching us that it is very important to us, uh, for us to dwell in unity, for us to support each other, especially if we are sharing the Word of God. 
So he was accompanied by other apostles. And then he was bold in his declaration. He was bold in his declaration. Probably Peter spoke in Aram, Aram, Arame, Arame. This is their uh, local language. The common vernacular of the day. He actually used a language that is comfortable for him. He is comfortable with his language. That's why if you're Filipino and you're sharing the word of God to a Filipino, better to speak in Tagalog. Don't pretend that you can speak good English. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because, you know, you can, you can be very bold if you use the language that you are comfortable with. Unless you are sharing it with another uh, nationality, then you have no choice but to use English. Uh, uh, as mentioned in the, in the lesson, you know, probably Peter speaking Aramic, the common vernacular of the day. He, he was also confident in his message. Why do you think he is confident in his message? He said, it says in the Bible, standing up with the eleven, lift up his voice. And said unto them, Ye men of Judea, all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. He was bold in his declaration. The only reason why he was bold in his declaration, because he was filled with the Spirit of God. The only reason you can be bold in your message is, is because of the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, all the words you will say will be useless, will be fruitless, will not be productive. It is only by the power of the Holy Spirit that your message will be sent because the message will be convincing and the message will be convicting only because of the power of the Holy Spirit. You can see that Peter, Peter's sermon was bold only because he was spirit-filled. Only because he was spirit-filled. And because of that, you can see that he is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Not only that he was accompanied by other believers or other apostles, he was also bold in his declaration, but he was also strong in his defense against false accusations. You can see that some, uh, at this time, um, some accused the, the spirit-filled believers of being drunk because they were speaking in other language. So other people are saying, you are drunk with wine. Note that, that it was not a reasonable, re, sorry, reasonable to charge a disciple with, with drunkenness because it was only the third hour of the day or about nine o'clock in the morning. So there's no way that they are drunk. They, they are speaking in other tongues because of the power of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> So the first point or the first uh, characteristic of Peter's sermon is that, you know, uh, uh, we can see that he defended the early church, Peter's defense of the early church. And the second point, in defense of the church, Peter also described the sign gifts. He described the sign gifts or Peter's de description of sign gifts. It was according to the prophecies of Joel. We can see in verse 15. It says, For these are not drunken, as he supposed seeing it, but the third hour of the day. But this is, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. The term, the last days, has been used to describe human events since the time of Christ. The Bible says that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Peter said, or Peter quoted the prophecy of Joel. Why do you think Peter quoted the prophecy of Joel? What was the purpose? What was the purpose? The purpose was for the people to know that the message being preached or being uh, delivered by Peter and the others was of God's origin. It was a message from God. That is the reason why Peter quoted the Bible or the scripture. 
he quoted the prophecy of Joel, so as the other, uh, so so that you know people would know that the message is coming from God. <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, the Bible says that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. In Isaiah 53, we can see that Jesus would come as a suffering servant. If you uh, study the account in Isaiah chapter 53, this is the prophecy of the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ to save us. <clears throat> he, his first coming ushered in the, in the last days, it mentioned. Also in 1 John chapter 2 verse 18, it says, Little children, children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are, the, are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. It is the last time. So la the, the last days is referring to our days. Right after the Lord's resurrection and up to now, this is the last days. <clears throat> also in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, it was prophesied that Jesus would come as a ruling king. As a ruling king in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. The complete fulfillment of Joel's prophecy will not be known until the millennial kingdom. Pentecost was a foretaste of the power to come when Christ returns. We can see before uh, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and before His ascension to heaven, He promised that He will send the Holy Spirit. We, we learned this last week when uh, Brother Sam uh, teach about the Holy Spirit or the coming of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> this is our weapon. The Holy Spirit is our weapon to preach the gospel. It is our weapon. Uh, during that days, there were sign gifts. People speak in tongues. They, they uh, perform miracles. You know, the reason why uh, it is needed, those speaking in tongues, miracles, and, and, uh, and all the things that they do, it is very important at that time so that you know, people will realize that the message that they are preaching is coming from God. <clears throat> Many of the things described in Joel's prophecy did not take place at the day of Pentecost. There are some that took place, but there are still a lot of things that will happen in the future. There are no wonders in the sky or blood, fire, vapor, or smoke, but those signs will be seen at the second coming according to Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 to 30. Don't think that all of those prophecies have been fulfilled because only a certain prophecies oh, oh, sorry, sorry, certain prophecies have been fulfilled and some of the prophecies will still be fulfilled when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. Many charismatics would misinterpret Joel 2 to apply it to the so-called gift of tongues in the 20th century are also post-millennialists in order to support their position. Our position is that Speaking in tongues, performing miracles are just sign gifts. They are no longer uh, they are no longer existing at this time. Because they are given so that you know people would believe that the message that they are preaching or the gospel they are teaching is coming from the Lord. Because without the miracles, people will not believe. That is the reason why God gave those gifts, which are sign gifts. Also in this lesson, we, can, we, we, we will learn that Joel prophesied that all who trusted in the Lord would be saved. Joel chapter 2 verse 32, it says that whosoever shall call on the, the name of the Lord shall be delivered. The message of salvation was not widespread in the Old Testament. Although the Jews believed that the Messiah is coming, However, you know, the, 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 the message of salvation was not widespread. As God's chosen people, the nation of Israel knew the truth of the coming Messiah. But now we are privileged, we are blessed, because salvation is being preached everywhere. Amen. 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 Salvation is being preached everywhere. And all those who responded would receive God's free gift of salvation. Very important to know that only those who responded would receive God's gift of salvation. You know, I was I was watching one video and I and uh, and uh, I was surprised because you know in the beginning I thought it's a it's a 
it's a it's a gospel he is preaching that everybody would be saved because God loves everybody which is not true God loves everybody but only who, who those who will receive will receive the gift of salvation amen so if, if somebody would tell you that uh, uh, the love of God is, 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 uh, is already enough you know, for us to be saved, that is not correct. Because truly, God loves us. But we need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior for Amen. us to receive the gift of salvation. Amen. <clears throat> so we learned about Peter's defense of the church or defense of the early church. And also we learned about the description of Peter on the sign gifts and number three we will learn Peter's declaration of a recent savior Peter's declaration of a recent savior in verses 22 and 22 to 24 it says ye men of Israel hear these words Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of him as ye yourselves also know him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Peter raised a forceful and controversial issue. The crucifixion was not an issue about which the predominantly Jewish crowd would want would wanted to hear. The preaching of Christ was the central of the Christian faith before. It is still the, se the center of our Christian faith. Amen. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Peter preached <clears throat> that Christ is eternally pre-existent. Peter preached that Christ was God in the flesh. And then Peter preached that Christ is the only way to heaven. Amen. It is still the same message that we are teaching today. Amen. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. We can also learn from Peter, the first sermon of Peter, that Jesus' ministry was already proven. It was already proven. The nature and character of Jesus Christ was attested to God the Father. It says here in verse 22, Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. <clears throat> as I mentioned, the nature and character of the Lord Jesus Christ was, was attested to by God the Father. Jesus' ministry was accompanied by various signs and wonders but what was the purpose of these miracles in John 10 verse 37 to 38 it says the purpose of Jesus miracles was to confirm God's hands on the messenger Jesus was very clear that the purpose of a sign was so people would acknowledge God's message and respond accordingly for them to know that the message is coming from God, from God and for the people to respond accordingly. There are signs and wonders. And wonders, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. It says in John chapter 2, John chapter 3 verse 2. Signs, wonders, miracles. Please also know the Jews witness all these miracles. They witness the miracles of God, the miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ. They saw the, the signs. They, they, they uh, experienced the wonders and the miracles. However, they still rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. They did not lack information because all the information were already given and they experienced it and they saw it themselves. What do they lack? 
what do they lack? They have the information. However, they lack the willingness to accept what is the truth. The truth is that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only Savior and the only way to heaven. They have the information. As Pastor mentioned earlier, almost saved but still lost. You may have the information. You know, Catholics would have the information. They would profess that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. And yet, they are not going to heaven. Why? Because they don't know the truth. They refuse to accept the truth. The truth is that you need the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart so that you can go to heaven. Without Jesus Christ in your heart, still your destination will be heaven. They have the information. However, the willingness to accept the truth is not there. Just like the Jews and most of us, most of the people today. They have the information and yet they don't have the willingness to accept what is the truth. So Jesus' ministry was proven. Proven by his, the signs, the wonders, and the miracles. And also Jesus' ministry was predicted. It was predicted. Peter said Jesus was delivered up or given to his enemies. In verse 23, 23 says, Him being delivered by the determinate counsel. It was predetermined. The word predetermined means to mark out with a boundary. The planning involved in the life and death of Christ should be a reminder to us of the love of God. The cross was God's predetermined plan of, redemp plan of redemption. There is no accident. It's not an accident. It was God's plan. Amen. The cross was God's plan. It was predetermined according to the foreknowledge of God. The, peak, the Greek word for foreknowledge is interpreted prognosis, which means to know before. Foreknowledge meaning in God's omniscience. God knows what the future holds, both for individuals and nations. He knows and sees everything in advance. You know, not just now. He knows what will happen in the future. And His will is carried out in accord with His plans and purposes. This is what we know, what, what we, uh, know about foreknowledge of God. He knew would happen. God planned the death of His Son for our salvation before the world was even created. The truth shows us the sovereignty of God. It reminds us that Jesus' death in no way contradicted His claims to be Messiah. It shows us that God can even use evil to accomplish His will. You know, this truth is very important that God is sovereign people. God is sovereign. God is sovereign. He knows what will happen in the future. And the plan of salvation has been planned even before the world began. <clears throat> As I mentioned, it reminds us that Jesus' death in no way contradicted His claims to be Messiah because this is the plan of God. Not only that, the Jesus, that Jesus' ministry was proven, it was also predicted, and also the Jesus' ministry was powerful. Peter preached about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 24, it says, Whom God hath praised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. There is no greater testimony to the power of the ministry of Christ than empty tomb. Amen. The resurrection is very important to our Christian faith. Amen. Amen. It is very important. The resurrection proved that the Lord Jesus Christ was divine. The resurrection proved Christ's power to forgive sins. His authority and power to break the bonds of sin. The resurrection revealed Christ's power over death and the resurre resurrection 
shows that the Lord Jesus Christ defeated God's enemy. That is the reason why the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is very important in our faith. It is very important in our faith. Peter said that death, death did not have the power to hold Jesus. In John chapter 2, verse 18 to 22, it says, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple. In three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple is in building, and will thou wear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said this unto them. And they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. As I mentioned, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is very important in our Christian faith. The first sermon that Peter delivered edified and built up the church. It edified, edified and built up the church. In fact, on this day, 3,000 people or 3,000 Jews were saved. We can see the power. We can see the working of the Holy Spirit in the lives of these Jews. Because on this day, because of the preaching of Peter, because of his boldness or the boldness of his message, because of the working of the Holy Spirit, 3,000 Jews were saved. Why is that? Why is that? We can see that the Sermon of Peter has four characteristics. Four characteristics. Number one, it is spirit-filled. We can see the working of the Holy Spirit as a result of the 3,000 who were saved at that day. And then number two, it was biblical. He quoted the scripture. He quoted the scripture. Number three, it was Christ-centered. He preached that the Lord Jesus Christ died and indeed rose again after three days. It was spirit-filled, it was biblical, it was Christ-centered, and then number four, it was evangelistic. The reason why the Lord came to this earth is to save us. And if, if nobody would talk about His resurrection and the, and the salvation that He is offering, then the death of the Lord Jesus Christ will be useless. So what are the four characteristics of that preaching or the first sermon delivered by Peter? It was spirit-filled, it was biblical, it was Christ-centered, and it was evangelistic. The first sermon of the early church should be the standard for churches and pastors Amen. even up to this time. Amen. So the preaching should be spirit-filled, it should be biblical, it should be Christ-centered, it should be evangelistic. That was the method before. It, was the met it is the method today and it should be the method tomorrow. Nothing Amen. has changed. Because the gospel is still the same. The Lord Jesus Christ came to save us. He died on the cross. He was buried. On the third day, He rose again according to the scripture. This is the message. Nothing has changed. 2,000 years ago, Peter preached about this subject. We are preaching it today. And future pastors and preachers should still preach the same message. That God... The Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins to save us. Amen. Amen. I hope you learned something today. Amen.